No cause for worry, the governor says, confessing to some concern. The January take above last year, below forecast. The majority party's social agenda, the minority party, can't seem to stop it. But first, after two weeks, how's the new president playing in a state he won in a breeze? A newsmaker interview begins Arkansas Week in a moment. Arkansas Week is made possible in part by the Arkansas Times, keeping you informed by covering people, events, and politics in Arkansas. By FM 89, KUAR in Little Rock, with in-depth news reporting, analysis, and discussion each weekday. Hello again, everyone. Thanks for joining us for Arkansas Week, a shadow over state spending. No more than that, says Governor Hutchinson, and we'll get to that in just a moment. First, Arkansas in the age of Trump, after two weeks of it anyway. We'll kick off the broadcast with that tonight. Dr. Heather, Ra Heather Yates joins us from the political science faculty at UCA. Bud Cummins, attorney at law and state chairman of the Trump campaign. Mm -hmm in 2016 and thanks to both of you for coming in bud let me mr cummins let me go to you first it's been a controversial two weeks uh how is this playing is there any reason to think that his popularity won arkansas just in a snap something like two-thirds about 60 percent any reason to believe that that has suffered any in the last two weeks not by feedback i get i, I get very positive feedback people that speak to me seem to appreciate the fact that he's moving quickly on campaign promises, which is not always the case and in previous administrations of both parties. And, and uh, uh, you know, people, we're a polite society in the South. Sometimes Mr. Trump says things that are a little edgy and, and uh, insulting towards somebody. And, and people sometimes maybe get a little uncomfortable. But I think most people I speak to are more appreciative that they're moving forward in a decisive way. Heather Yates, do you have any dissent? I mean, any, you, you see any bumps in that narrative? Not at the state level. There's there's certainly not any bumps that would I indicate that um, Arkansas voters are upset with the pace that he's moving at. Um, on a national level, you know, about 35 percent um, of his supporters believe that he's moving at the, the right pace. And the two weeks of controversy has been framed as such is actually Trump is, is following suit with the Obama administration at, at the same time. In the first two weeks of the Obama administration, um, Obama issued quite a few executive orders and Trump has only issued one more executive order than, um, excuse me, Trump has issued one more executive order than Obama has. And the feedback I'm also getting in, among the student population is that they are pleased. Um, they thought that Donald Trump in the inauguration might have overpromised, and so they were waiting with bated breath. But so far, um, they seem to be pleased with his pace and um, hopes that, at least they, th they hope that he keeps up this pace for four years. But as I like to remind people that the presidency is a marathon and not a sprint. So we'll see how this plays out. He seems to have caught, but uh, Mr. Cummins, he seems to have caught some members of Congress, a lot of the Congress, at times off guard, particularly on, uh, not particularly anyway, certainly on the trade issue, where in terms of the Arkansas delegation, it's basically five to one on some of these trade issues. Uh, he's plainly at odds with the wishes of the delegation. How, how are they going to maneuver this? Well, trade's important, and I think most conservatives believe in free trade. May I interject too? Governor Hutchinson has also expressed some deep concerns over the administration. Certainly, and, and they represent rice farmers that want to export rice and, and other other Arkansas uh, constituencies that depend on on exports and trade. Uh, I think I think you can assume, at least for now, that Donald Trump understands negotiation. And I'll also tell you that I've, I've spent a lot of time in Washington over the last three or four months. and. Even the most strong advocates of free trade will confide in private that we have not negotiated these deals as aggressively as we probably should, and we certainly have not enforced them. We've allowed people to cheat on them without taking any action. So if all we do is go enforce the deals we have and maybe uh, be a little bit more 
aggressive and less focused on hanging a trophy on the wall when we did negotiate a trade deal, that's probably a worthy objective. And if, if from a negotiating standpoint, if he wants to start with a really extreme position and work towards that, uh, that makes some sense. I think, H, we, we've got a delegation that I don't think there's any of the six had originally backed Mr. Trump. Everyone had a, a different candidate. Right, and including the governor who... Including uh, Mr. Cummins, who right. was Mr. Christie's... Uh, and that, that's uh, a, that's a very a common... little late to the party. Some of them came in behind me. But, okay. And yeah. that's a common narrative along uh, the, the delegates that are strongly in, in Trump's corner su uh, support right now. I was I was speaking to somebody in Ohio that um, backed K Kucinich and jumped onto the the Trump bandwagon and now is is, is in their corner. Um, and at the, the state level, um, you've, you've got this... By bifurcation between the voters and the um, constitutional officers that are nervous about Trump's positioning on some of these trade negotiations. Because just last year, Asa Hutchinson negotiated some trade um, deals for Arkansas. And rightly so, they want to know how does federal law, how is that going to impact state autonomy going forward on these deals? Um, Arkansas voters, ideological. It's ideological support. Um, the Arkansas voter wants to make sure that they have income and that can supply food for their families. And as far as ideological rhetoric Trump is using, they're fine with it so far. Um, they're looking to Governor Hutchinson to iron out the finer details in the federal structure that we have. And Asa Hutchinson just wants to make sure that their trade with foreign partners is not impacted negatively. Well, we have health care at issue also. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Cummins, the Republican majority, and the administration itself seems to be uncertain as to how to move forward on this. And you've got now something in excess of 300,000 Arkansans who are watching very closely. Well, I think for the first Th those time... Those who are on the exchanges. Right, I mean. sure. The, for the first time, I think the Republican Party has gotten off of you know, uh, let's not socialize medicine position and accepted the fact that, A, we've already socialized, you know, through Medicare, Medicaid and the veterans benefits. We socialized a lot of medicine and B, we don't do it very well or very efficiently. And C, there were a lot of uh, structural problems out there with people with pre-existing conditions and the kids. I think most people are now willing to concede that some of the things in Obamacare were, were good fixes. The problem with Obamacare is the, the, the people who designed it didn't take responsibility for the cost. They just provided the benefits. And so now somebody has to go back and try to solve some of the same problems, but take responsibility for the cost. We can only afford what we can afford. And and I think that's generally the message that Donald Trump has, has put out there. Uh, I don't think there's a clear plan, although it's been suggested we have a plan. I, I, I haven't seen it, and I don't think a lot of members of Congress have seen it. There's a lot of good ideas, though, and I think that that we're now, what Donald Trump has done is gotten us out of these polarized positions and because he's not a pure conservative or a pure, you know, philosophically uh, historical Republican, he's opened up the dialogue, I think, to use a lot of creative uh, ideas to try and really solve a problem. So I'm optimistic that maybe we'll come up with some health care solutions. He, he has committed that people are not going to be dying in the streets, which I take as a concession that, yes, we are going to need to do something to provide a basic level of health care to everybody. I have to follow up. How is Medicare inefficient? And you turn it administratively or in terms of overhead well, costs? I'm not an expert on it, but I have seen the cost of these policies in the exchange, and they're exorbitant. Maybe not to the person who's getting the, the subsidy, who's getting, you know, paying 20% of that premium, but somebody's got to pay that premium. And compared to the premium that I pay, uh, it's twice or three times. If I lose the individual policy I grandfathered in, my health care premium for my family is going to double or triple. And that is an exorbitant cost that can't be sustained. That, that's the piece of it that I can see. Even uh, with subsidies? Pardon me? even with subsidies well the subsidies have to be paid by the taxpayer so it's still a cost sure. and and i think that those have those costs are not in control under the current plan so somebody has to go back and redesign it it might mean a a, a, a less fulsome coverage for the people that we're providing the subsidy to but uh, somebody has to take responsibility for the cost. He's not liberal, he's not conservative, or I don't want to put words. What is Mr. Trump? I mean, you were his state chair. He's had two weeks in office. I think he's a problem solver. I mean, I think that, you know, somebody said one time, I'm not really interested in doing things that feel good. I'm, I'm interested in doing things that do good. And he, to me, seems like he act, he's frustrated like a lot of us, 60% of the people in Arkansas, with Republicans and Democrats that talk a good game, but then we continually confront the same problems and don't seem to make any progress. Looks to me like he's a problem solver, and I'm optimistic that he's going to go out and really try and solve these problems and not pay attention to a lot of the noise.
Heather Yates. Well, cost of health care has been a driving force um, on health care reform ever since Harry Truman proposed it. And so every administration, Republican and Democrat, have tried to wrap their heads and policy around managing cost for consumers. And what has, has complicated things under the health care reform under Obama was that um, it was a federal structure. There was a lot of states that um, did not accept federal funds on ideological bases. And, and in Arkansas, it's also got a few extra variables at play, too, because how Asa Hutchinson wanted to um, orchestrate and structure health care, trying to manage cost for um, Arkansans. And so at this state of, of play at policy, Donald Trump has recognized that cost, once again, going, you know, is, is an issue. Um, they, Congress has to wrap their heads around that. Congress has to, and the bureaucracy has to wrap their policy around it to make it manageable. Um, in addition to cost, also how to get people covered. There's also a coverage crisis as well. More people have been covered under ACA, but cost is still in the back, the background. Somebody is absorbing cost somewhere. You can't burden the voter because politically you get voted out and you can't burden the policy or the bureaucracy. So this is not going to be a quick fix. Um, Trump has four years um, and Trump wants to move quickly in two years because of the 2018 midterm elections. Have to get going because we're out of time. Thanks to both of you. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Thank we'll you. be right back. And we're back. Heather Yates has hung around for the uh, second half of our broadcast. She's joined by Wesley Brown of Talk Business and Politics and Ernie Dumas, an independent journalist and columnist for Arkansas Times. Let's start on the fiscal side. Mm -hmm. On Thursday... Wesley, there was this gentlest of admonitions by uh, the governor to uh, general revenue agencies. We may, may, may have to impose some spending restraints. Yeah, uh, the governor uh, made an announcement, I think it was Thursday afternoon. He gathered, gathered some reporters around. Uh, uh, that came after the revenue report came out, and the revenues showed that we were... Uh, uh, down for for the year, we're down 57 million, or 1.8 percent, a little bit uh, better from a year ago. But but uh, uh, it shows that we're behind. And, and uh, uh, he on the day before, on Wednesday, he passed a tax cut, 50.5 million tax cuts. So uh, and the question was asked: Will was he comfortable with uh, where we stand in terms of revenue in the economy? And yeah. uh, uh, and on um, he had to come back <laughs> on Thursday. Uh, to uh, address those issues and, and what he said was that he put the state agency directors on notice that there may be some pain in the future if things don't improve. January alone net available revenue down 8% earning year to date gross down almost 2%. 2% doesn't sound like much but it is. No, uh, you know revenue reports a uh, one month revenue report is is often very meaningless because of all the fluctuations depending on the uh, whether the end of the, the last day of the month ends on during the week or on a weekend can significantly affect your collections from that. It'll be offset, of course, the next month. So, as as will be the case, DFNA says in February. That's mm -hmm. right. So That's there'll be there, there should be a good uh, February should be a good month. So everybody will be optimistic after February <laughs> that things have changed, but they won't be. But it's overall, you know, seven months into the into the fiscal year, things are are, are, are well off the pace of what they expected, and they they. They budgeted very conservative. They have for the last uh, six or eight years. They budget very conservatively every year. The forecast is very conservative because they want right. to they want to leave some money at the end for the general improvement fund for themselves to spend, and this time uh, for the uh, for the highway department to have. So uh, it's, uh, it's 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 not a it's not a very good uh, picture for the for the governor. So I think what he's projecting is that maybe in June. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to release. Uh, we know we want to get into the the, the, the eccentricities of the uh, Revenue Stabilization Act, but allotment B, which is the kind of second category of funds, which they may not now be able to distribute, and that would ordinarily be distributed in in uh, in, in, <coughs> in June. So probably that's not going to be distributed now, mm -hmm. and they're going again going to come up short. I think it's pretty clear, although the governor was slightly pessimistic about it, but I think it's pretty clear that the highway department is not going to get that big infusion of uh, of cash uh, at the end of the fiscal year that they can use to match federal funds. Of course, the governor says, well, I can, we'll find some other money for them. We'll reach back into the rainy day fund and, 
and uh, to, that in order that they are able to make them able to, to match the federal funds. But uh, but again, it plays into the, this, all these taxes. They just got through. He had just uh, signed uh, his tax cut bill for low-income people. Uh, they're fixing to pass the, I uh, guess, the military tax, the military, military the tax. retirement, retirement There's pensions. There's what, 15 to 18 million right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, that's 13. There, and then they're going to yeah. they're going to cut the uh, the the tax on soft drinks uh, syrup, the one that. That, that the Governor Tucker passed in 1993, I guess, when it was. And then it was submitted to refer to the voters, and the voters overwhelmingly passed it. But, but we're going to give a little tax break to the, uh, to the soft drink uh, industry as well. So all of that's coming down the pike, and that's going – it won't affect things right away because he's postponing all those tax increases uh, at least until the year the 2018 and then 2019 for right. those tax cuts really take effect after the next election, of course, yeah. uh, when all of those things will take place. Well, uh, Wesley, and that, that money, the highway department that Ernie noted was, the highway department is screaming. I mean, absolutely essential, and has Vermont, absolutely essential yeah. to keep anything resembling a highway program on track. Right, yeah, because those are, as Ernie noted, that the, those are, have to match with federal funding and uh, uh, if, if that money does, if there's projects and we're already seeing you can you can go out on the highways and see the effect of, of, of that federal money coming into the state uh, of several projects that have been tabled for a long time are now back on schedule so uh, of, of course uh, and, and the governor has asked the Good Roads Foundation which is uh, uh, the group that has has tried to plan and and still the issue keeps coming back. Will we need uh, to raise taxes? And, and and I think that's the issue. If things don't get better, that issue is going to continue to come come back up. Heather, I don't see anyone. I haven't heard yet anyone outside the Capitol demanding that these tax cuts be halted. No, no, there, <laughs> no, there isn't. There isn't because tax cuts sound great politically. Um, and Asa Hutchinson has also um, authorized tax cuts across many brackets of income. And this this recent one, the $50 million tax cut, is also going to benefit low-income Arkansans. So that absolutely is not going to hurt anybody's re-election chances. And Democrats are, are good to not criticize them because, one, they're minority, and two, Democrats being against tax cuts is not going to play well with the low-income Arkansans benefiting from this in 2018. So, so yeah, nobody is, is advocating for that at this juncture. I, I would say nobody is talking about it, but, but you have... They don't have a megaphone. They're <laughs> muttering. They're muttering. Yeah, you, about yeah, you can see, and in, in some of the debate on on the tax cuts policy this week, uh, especially the military tax cut bill, you could, uh, especially the what you call the fiscal conservatives, were really saying, how can we pay for this? And and we're using. Uh, 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 and Ernie talked about the uh, 13 million uh, syrup tax, and that was really one. Of the, and we're we're raising taxes on one group to pay for this. So. And uh, so, and it's, it's, you know, some, as we call it, it's some funny accounting going on. So. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that soft drink tax goes into the Medicaid fund. That, that's the backup money for, for, for Medicaid. Mm -hmm. So you're taking away some of the money to, to match the federal Medicaid money, which is one of the big, big issues coming down the pike is uh, how are we going to match the, uh, the federal money uh, for Medicaid, the, uh, which, which is about a... 70-30 match, I guess. Right, Probably right. less than that. How we match is better than that. <laughs> yeah. Well, on the on the on the revenue side, there are now I think two bills. Mm -hmm. Wesley, this has been cooking for 20 years, I guess, at, at one form or another, and that's how to how the states can collect internet sales yeah, tax. E-commerce, right? Right. And yeah, e yeah. There's a bill out there, and and already the the American for Prosperity has said this is. We, we can't do this. Uh, it's an, another tax uh, tax increase, tax hike, and, and but this bill seems to have some uh, steam. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, people that are, are saying that, that we need to, um, uh, this is a revenue uh, stream that we can really grow from because of uh, <coughs> the, the increase in internet activity. And there was a discussion in one of the House panels about all the people during this holiday season who shopped online and, 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 and didn't pay taxes for it. So Arkansas wants to get 
a part of that money that people are, are spending going to Amazon.com, going, uh, it, uh, it's even calling Walmart to change their whole strategy to, to online. So, Arkansas, 49 other states, the District of Columbia, and probably some territories. Yeah, definitely. So that, that, that's a big pool of money out there. E-commerce e is, is, is usually, it's growing almost uh, putting retailers out of business. So it's a huge bucket of money out there. You can style that, and of course we're talking about something that's basically almost certainly years away from implementation because right. there are all sorts of legal hurdles that have to be yeah. cleared. But y one could call it a tax increase, but one could also very well not call it a tax increase. But basically it's a fairness question. Mm -hmm. Everybody, uh, we're expected in Arkansas, that's one of the, one of the, the, the basic concepts of, of our tax system is, is taxing commerce. Right. And so all the merchants have to collect that tax, and here their competitors now, rising comp competition in the e-commerce market is, they don't have to pay taxes if you, if you buy there. So there's a, there's a fairness uh, element to it as well. So I, th I think it would be easy, easy to pass such a, such a bill in Arkansas, the legislature, both houses, Republicans and Democrats, but you've got to get, uh, you know, Congress I think needs to act first. And, and give the the state some some authority to yeah to live yeah, yeah there's a lot of federal issues on yeah. on this issue of e-commerce and and taxing that that uh, uh, has to hurdles that have to be passed uh, and also you have the issue of Amazon uh, uh, and and these retailers or e-tailers collecting that tax uh, some uh, refuse to do so so that that will also be an issue okay other years and. Well, Looking at this through a, a partisan lens, you know, Dem Democrats would be smart here to actually pay, focus on how this is playing out at the state level, um, to, to watch how the Republicans are proposing this very closely, and with 2018 in mind, um, conduct some of their party building and be and, and groom some talent and be ready to run some candidates in districts that might come vulnerable depending on what the current legislature does with regard to this. Um, and yeah, with the federal the federal issue, federalism. The Commerce Clause, the federal <laughs> government, Congress will always have an interest in commerce being conducted between states or within Arkansas. But, but yeah, you know, looking at this through uh, the ideas of, of re-election, Democrats have a real opportunity here if they seize it. Well, and it's worth noting also that both bills in the pending in the General Assembly on e-commerce sales taxes are sponsored by or the wor handiwork of, of Republican members. But let's go on to some other numbers. We don't have the Arkansas stats and won't for another few days. Right. But the U.S. Uh, jobless rate mm -hmm. went up, and that's kind of good news. Yeah, it was good news, but it's pretty much unchanged. Last last month it was 4.70 in the, the Obama administration, but the, I guess the key figure that that that's out there is that 227,000 jobs were added to the com uh, economy. So it was a great handoff from the Obama administration to the Trump administration to give them a good start as uh, uh, already this morning, uh, after the report came out, you're seeing the stock market uh, take into account, absorb that, and, 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 and you're seeing, I think the market has hit over 20,000 uh, again. So uh, the, the, the Trump administration is starting off good with a good a report, but but now it's going to be up to him to keep that momentum going. Which, as as uh, the Obama administration has added more jobs uh, than any other administration in history, so it's it's a he's going to have to keep that momentum going. Heather Yates, the momentum behind in the General Assembly is behind the Republicans on the quote social agenda. And this past week we had action on uh, guns on campus, for example. Right. Uh, a lot of these are part of uh, party line votes almost right down to the number. Right. Yeah, they are. Um, because essentially right now, Arkansas is, for all intents and purposes, a one-party state. And they are capitalizing mm -hmm. on this momentum. And they are capitalizing on this momentum on the social agenda. Pragmatic issues are not as contentious um, even when there's a, a split house or, or more competitive races. But right now with um, their legislative themes, there's a couple of themes here. Number one, um, in across all the board, the House uh, bills, the Senate bills focusing on conceal and carry, medical marijuana, um, Sharia are, laws. Sure, are there. They're, they're all. They've got this common theme of trying to legislate restriction on choices, whatever that choice is. Restriction on institutions, um, on the conceal and carry law. It's uh, universities. It's removing the opt out clause that the 2013 bill right. had, um, and with the Senate bill 238 on halting the medical marijuana infrastructure, it's it's also again restricting choice. So that's a common theme that's. Come 
coming forward in this social agenda, and it's it's something that the Republicans are, you know, riding that wave of momentum. And once again, another opportunity for Democrats if they take it, party building activities, grooming mm -hmm. and recruiting that talent, and having candidates ready to step in, depending on how this agenda plays out. It would appear that the biggest opportunity, if under that strategy, would be voter ID. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that 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 one bill uh, and, and, and sh uh, speaking to all those bills it, 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 if you saw those uh, uh, debates in the committee uh, even though you had line up and line up of people uh, against these these particular bills Sharia law the anti-Sharia law the the guns on campus uh, 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 once even uh, all the opposition they were over Overwhelmingly approved out of the committees, and now uh, most of them are headed to the House floor, where they'll probably get approved just as just as quickly. Uh, the voter ID is one that has been a, a key Democratic issue for a long time, and 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 not to see the party has really not taken that, hasn't taken the strides to say, hey, this is our issue. Let's go out and and start uh, as she start talked about building party consensus and and. Uh, talking to millennial voters out there that, that can help rebuild the party because if you go up to the state capitol, Democrats have n no power. They have no uh, to get a bill out of committee right now. Ernie, you get the last well, word. Well, all of these things are, 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 are efforts to uh, reverse the jurisprudence uh, of the last decade, much longer than that, on the voter, uh, voter ID. Uh, they're trying to reverse a, a Supreme Court decision in 2014 that uh, that uh, uh, cast out the voter I last voter ID right. law they passed. It's, the same is true on all the abortion bills to reverse, uh, uh, hoping that they would reverse a U.S. Supreme Court decision. All of these acts probably will be thrown, thrown out in federal court in the next year or so after they get uh, become law. Uh, and uh, uh, th there are several others you can, yeah. you can identify as trying to change the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. Gotta to, got to end it there. We're out of time. Thanks to everybody for coming in. As always, thanks to you for watching, and we'll see you next week. Arkansas Week is made possible in part by the Arkansas Times, keeping you informed by covering people, events, and politics in Arkansas. By FM 89, KUAR in Little Rock, with in-depth news reporting, analysis, and discussion each weekday.